Hey, what's up? Today we're talking to Nathan Wong from the British Virgin Islands. I thought it was the U.S. Virgin Islands. British Virgin Islands. Are there U.S. Virgin Islands? USVI? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, this is this is Nathan, Alternative Concrete Solutions. Uh, the audio is questionable, but I think you're gonna. It's you know you should better hear it, right? Yeah, it's interesting. It's good. So, anyways, here we go. Hey, I'm Tim C. Hey, I'm Landon Blanks. And you're listening to Hacking Concrete. Yeah! Let's see. This is hacked together. This is a hack job. I would say this is pretty impressive. <laughs> I mean, don't you think? Video conference with some guy, some dude down in the Virgin Islands. Some dude in paradise. <laughs> Yeah, we are in paradise, but we can't enjoy it. Why? We're literally What's going on? on 24-hour turf. We're, we live probably a thousand feet from the beach, but we literally can't go to the beach, can't leave our house, can't do groceries, can't do none of that. 24-hour curfew. What are your employees doing? Where, where are they right now? They're all home. Man. They're all home freaking out. Yeah, pretty crazy. Mm. All right, so I have a question real quick before we get any further. Um, do you think his yeah. audio sounds good enough? I don't think it's, a, it's from what I can hear. I don't think it's an issue. I think the audio is okay. I think it is. Yeah. Let's just roll with it. Other people do phone in podcasts all the time, right? Yeah. I mean, it's not going to be perfect. Yeah. Okay. So then I don't need to wear the mic then. If, if you're not using my audio, I don't need to use the mic. You don't need to wear the mic. No. So I think it's fine. Well, you, it sounds like a phone call. Like you guys sound like a phone call look, to me as well. Wait, look, look, Timmy, he's had enough. He's, he's leaving. He's, he's leaving. He's jerking off the mic. <laughs> he's done with it already. This hacking concrete is the worst here. thing I've ever been a part of. <laughs> so of the, 15, of the 15 islands, how many have you worked on? Probably close to 10, <laughs> 8 to 10. Crazy. And how far apart? Anywhere from a mile to 20 miles. <laughs> <laughs> I'm you... just picturing carrying concrete on a boat Yeah. for that long. Is there an alternative concrete well, solution no. boat? <laughs> I wish. Um, not yet, no. Um, <laughs> we typically, if we have a lot of materials, a lot of our materials are sent over ahead of time on the barge. So they have regular barges that run to these islands that take much longer than the, the passenger ferries. Uh -huh. um, but usually we coordinate with the client to send over the materials um, ahead of time so that they're, they're there so that when we commute daily or whatever it is, um, that yeah, the materials aren't going on the passenger train for the tools. So what about your machine? You got it. You put your machine on the barge too, or do you kind of risk it? No, we put the machinery on barge. We have a cargo trailer and pickup truck. Um, yeah, so we typically make a couple of runs with machinery and tools, and then you know the materials are just packed on pallets and a couple of runs on uh, a forklift. on a on a boat for twenty miles. <laughs> um. So for Anagata, Anagata would be the furthest island. That was the three-year job that we had. It was a residential job. It was just, yeah. took way longer than it should have. But we'll, we'll, post know, a link to your video. we'll post a link to your video up here so people can go check that out yeah. about this job. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty crazy. So we, we had to reorder materials twice um, because of the hurricane and you know some other issues so we had probably four barge runs for materials and equipment and then very often we would have um because for the last year that we were working on that job the, the client doesn't live in the in the country so they would only come twice a year so if we needed to do a sample of a of a change um she would have to see it in person before she decided um oh my god so she would come down she would come down and she would see it um, and then, you know, we'd do the work and then she'd come back, you know, six months later. And if she had another change, like you, the last year, year and a half of that job, we were, we were only there probably 10 days, but it took a year and a half. Oh, funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Timmy, what are you thinking about right now? I, I want to hear the, I want to hear the, um, the steps of the job. So let's say, so once you get the job and you need to order materials, uh, obviously you just order it like anybody does. How do, how do they get it to you? Like, what do you do? Most of my suppliers are based in Florida, but, you know, I do have some suppliers 
in Texas and other states. And, um, yeah, I just make my, make my orders. All of our freight is consolidated in Miami at a freight forwarder. And then we have to, you know, fill out customs paperwork, submit this stuff online. Customs approves it. Take from Miami, it takes about four to five days to arrive in the British Virgin Islands. Once it arrives here at the port, we have to submit the paperwork, get the paperwork cleared, go into the port, um, pay for shipping and duty and all of those sorts of things. And then, you know, we have trucks delivered either to our workshop or directly to the job site. And, you know, that's, that's typically a 10 day process, best case scenario from Miami. You but know, depending on what the materials are or where they're coming from stateside, you know, it could be anywhere from three days to four weeks that's to funny. get certain materials manufactured and delivered to Miami. So you want to hear you want to hear Landon's I, process I, for ordering? <laughs> why don't you tell them what you Why don't you tell them what you do? Good. You know how I order? I pay for overnight delivery. Tell me. <laughs> I pay for overnight, pay for overnight delivery. <laughs> Overnight, every time. <laughs> so how much does that cost? Hey, we don't get into that. We don't get into that. Uh, <laughs> no. So for a, for, I, for a pallet? Well, no, not a pallet. We're, I'm talking about diamonds and a bucket here and there. but yeah. No, no, no I, I do that stuff as well. So if we, we were on a job, well, it happens very often where we have to use FedEx or UPS. And um, if I need something urgently, I will... FedEx down part. So I've I've paid for diamonds or um, small little parts for a machine that broke down, and the part could be a hundred dollars, and I'm paying one hundred and fifty dollars for a FedEx. Oh, that's not so bad. Day delivery. <laughs> that's that's so, actually not that bad. That's <laughs> actually very. That's actually the same thing we pay. Yeah. All right. So yeah. I mean, yeah. That, that's kind of our thing. So we go to the job site and we, um, you know, we take approximately what we need, and then we always overnight stuff the day before. I mean that. Because they pick it, you know, we're just spoiled and we can allow our customers to pick a color hours before we put it down. They'll pick, yeah. it, they'll pick it today at one and we'll put it down tomorrow morning at 10. Yep. And, you know, we'll order overnight. Yeah. If it's, if it it's happens small, all the time. If it's small stuff, no problem. No problem. But yeah, the big stuff obviously takes anywhere from three weeks, best case scenario, to two months for materials for big, for big jobs. Okay. So. so so you were doing a vinyl chip grocery store the other day and it had like, it has like 10 different sections, a bunch of different colors and you have one and you, and you, you went to do it and you opened the boxes of chips and it was the wrong color and it's hundreds of pounds of stuff. So yeah, yeah. that was that particular area was right by the cashiers and there was probably 1200 square feet. So, so yeah, what do you do when you run out of something? Of- what do you do when you run out of something like that? That's a, a whole pallet of stuff. And you need it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I was extremely stressed out when that happened. Um, <laughs> just it. trying to imagine having that conversation with the client is extremely stressful. So I'm sorry, we're gonna, I, need, we're gonna need four more weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'm very upfront and uh, and truthful with my clients. I, I I don't I don't BS them too much. He was very understanding. Um, after a few days in the beginning, he was obviously more annoyed than he let on to me. Like he didn't yell at me or get too upset. He was very professional and I was very grateful for that. But, um, yeah, I, I, I showed him the color. He said he didn't like it at first. He showed probably three of his managers at the store, the color. They're like, yeah, I, I like it. And after a few days, he's like, okay, use it. So <laughs> because I told him the alternative of, you know, waiting another six, eight weeks for the, <laughs> for the correct color to arrive. And, um, and it wasn't our fault. We ordered the correct color and, you know, Torganol just sent the wrong chip. Yeah. They do that um, every once in a while. I've had that happen once in all of our time. And you're, you're fortunate that you, yeah, you we, actually noticed before you did it. We, we actually put it down and did the job and didn't notice. Yeah. It was supposed to be yellow and it was for us. It was, it was uh, 80%, 80% blue and 20% yellow, and the 20% was fluorescent green. Um, but it went down, and <laughs> in my opinion, fluorescent green. I don't know how that mistake happened, but in my opinion, it's the best section of the story. Oh, cool. <laughs> Everything happens for a reason. 
<laughs> so, so we have here in commercial construction, we have something called, um, we try to, we try to get paid for our mobilizations. <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking about mobilization fees for yeah. that to hopping over to another. I mean, you can't even do that. Do you do that? Can you do that? What do you mean? Like a deposit of? No, no, no. Like if we're, if we're going to do a job and they want us to break it into two, two sections, like do this section this week and then two weeks from now I'll do another section. We've already priced it just as one whole job. We always want to try to charge what we call a mobilization fee for that second time. Because, you know, to do a job in two sections takes almost twice as long as if we had just done the whole thing. So are All at one time. So you, uh, you have to leave the site and then come back again yeah. kind of thing? Yeah, sometimes. Do you, never, do, yeah. You ever, do you ever have to do that? No, because all our jobs are like that. I know. I don't see how you could do it. There's no way. <laughs> Yeah, we, it's very rare that I'd say 10% of the time, no, I, I, I'm struggling to think of a scenario where, I'm struggling to think of a scenario where we just go to a job and we start to finish and we're out of there. Like, I, I can't think of one off the top of my head. That's so None cool. of them are like that. That's crazy. <clears throat> Most of my jobs, I'm in and out, start to finish in like three or four days. Landings are not, like, you know, the polish no. side is not like that, but I can't imagine going back over yeah. and over. <laughs> so, so what's it like commuting by a boat to work? I tend to get seasick pretty easy, so I don't <laughs> typically like it. Um, <laughs> this makes it even funnier. Um, <laughs> in, um, sorry, sorry. I mean, though. my guys do it a lot. My, no, it's fine. My guys do it. I take gra- I take gravel. I mean, I have gravel all the time in my bag when I travel. So if if the seas are really rough and it's a lot, I'll definitely take a couple gravel before I go on the ferry. Is that a BVI but, um, Dramamine? <laughs> you ever heard of Dramamine? Uh, yeah, I've heard of it. I, I don't too much of the difference between <laughs> all the different drugs, must be but the same yeah, thing. it helps with seasickness. <laughs> I guess if you're commuting by boat, you're dependent on someone else's schedule to get to and from work. I can't imagine what that would be like. That would be brutal. Can you imagine that? Well, do you have a skiff? Do you hop out? Like, do you have one at your house where you hop on personally, or you're? Or do you sub that out, or do you pay someone to take you guys? Uh, yeah, we've subbed it out before. So we worked on a job at Cooper Island, and there's no regular ferry that goes there. So the client had to basically charter a rib, like a dinghy for us to drive us back and forth every day. And I think he was paying somewhere in the ballpark of $500 a day to, you know, commute us every day for that's a mobilization. Three or four fee. Weeks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You ever had anything, so, you ever had any, any disasters? Yeah, with the boat? You ever sank, sank a ship or anything? Many disasters. <laughs> um, probably the worst one. We were working at Necker Island. That's where Richard Branson has his private Island. And um, it's his whole, that's, that's his Island. Like, yeah, he bought it in the 80s for like 70 grand. Yeah, so the commuting, we were, um, I wasn't actually there the day, but my workers, they they were on the, the boat, the contractor's boat, and um, there was this huge rainstorm, and the GPS, for whatever reason, wasn't working on the boat, and they got turned around somehow on the way back to Tortola, and they were like out at sea in this massive rain and thunderstorm for like two hours. <laughs> And um, my workers were like messaging me, like saying, like this is crazy, like what's going on, like we can't get back to Tortola, the captain's lost, like who is this guy? <laughs> and um, <laughs> they, they they had like zero visibility, like they couldn't see twenty part of them, they couldn't like find other islands for landmarks, and it was just a disaster. And my workers were not pleased, and. Uh, <laughs> That was that was probably the that was probably the worst one where they were like scared for their life. Man, I, um, I just and there imagine. was there there was like a hundred there, there was like a hundred people on this boat. Too. Uh, there was a hundred people on the boat. Working. They were also lost with them. Yeah, they were all like stuck on the boat, and then until it cleared up and the weather passed, they were you know able to find out where they were in the ocean and then make their way back. <laughs> Let's picture our yeah. guys. I try to imagine our employees dealing with that, and I, I don't know how they would handle that. Can you imagine the calls we would get? Yeah, so like, so I, I pay my guys for the commute. 
<laughs> I pay my guys for the commute. And, and um, you know, that day there was an extra three hours of wages for like four guys. <laughs> <laughs> Mobilization fee. Sorry. Imagine Gordon on that. So how do you find him? How, yeah, I know. Can you imagine? I know. It's not going to be that funny for people listening and watching, but our employees, we have so many, they're just such good, such characters. And I just, eh, it'd be fun to see them reacting to that. The so, other one that you're probably insinuating and hoping to hear is the generator. We, the, the client that is a developer in the States, um, she recently purchased this private island. So we're doing some work over there, but they don't have like a, a proper like commuting boat. It's a very short commute, maybe 500 feet from one from the dock on the mainland to the actual private island. It's very short, um, and uh, they just have like three dinghies. So we're like loading our vacuums for our machinery, our floor, our smaller floor machine, and um, our generator because we need the 220 for the vacuums. And I was again, I wasn't there that day the contractor called me and said, your guys fell in the water. You need to, you know, get in touch with them and make sure they're okay. And I was trying to call them and their phones are off. (laughs) Yeah. I'm like, what are you talking about? They fell in the water. She's like, yeah, just call your guys. And uh, I was, it took me like two hours to get a hold of them because I guess their phones got wet. And, you know, at this time it was like 12 o'clock in the afternoon and they were already home. And um, they, they loaded the generator into the dinghy. And none of my guys are like boat guys. I didn't grow up, you know, having boats or being on boats. So um, I I understand why it happened, but if I was there, it wouldn't have been. Um, (laughs) But I guess the the guy driving the dinghy was supposed to, the the guy driving the dinghy was supposed to be holding the dock. And my two guys trying to lift this 800 watt uh, Generac generator from the dinghy up about three feet on and they're like okay one two three and they're like expecting this guy to like pull the dock and as soon as the momentum of them lifting the generator and trying to get it up onto the dock happened oh it they it. didn't tie the bow of the boat <laughs> they were they just had the guy holding the stern of the boat and they didn't tie the rope on the front of the boat so the whole front of the boat just swung <laughs> out <and laughs> they just both plunged into the water and it was like probably 12 feet of water um, crystal clear Caribbean beautiful water but like it wasn't cold by any means but yeah the whole generator and the two guys just into the into the water all right so and, a couple uh, of things here first of all you told that story perfect <laughs> I mean I, I pictured the whole thing I, can you yeah. see them pushing off the boat and Again, yeah so th- <laughs> yeah they're like one one two three and then the momentum of them pushing the generator pushed the bow of the boat off and they just in between the boat and the dock, they just fell right down. Did they see the humor in the in the situation? <laughs> we, we always joke about it. We have like our company culture is very like razzing each other. I don't know if that's common, but we we always razz each other at work. So yeah, we always joke about it. So did you say? Did you say they were home before they talked to you? Yeah. Could... yeah so this uh, they we usually we usually work from eight to four. So working, when we were working, when there's always delays and like you're waiting on the boat cap, you're waiting on this, you're waiting on that. Um, so I think they fell in the water probably around nine o'clock. And then by the time I talked to them, it was like 11 or 12. Um, <laughs> I, I, I think they were home by like 10 to 30. Because after the, after the generator fell in the water, one of the guys couldn't really swim. So he like grabbed the dock and the other guy got out gathered himself and then he dove into the water tied like uh, a strap or a rope to the generator they pulled it out left off and then you know they went straight home they're like did they not have phones there. to call you or anything or let you know they were wet. No, he said they were wet no they was wet they were wet <laughs> so they put them in they put them in rice turned them off um, the one guy oh, had the to phones. buy a new I'm phone. Oh, the phones. Okay. Phones okay. Are right. yeah. I got you. Yeah. That's funny. The yeah, but they didn't borrow a that, phone. Uh, uh-huh. The reason why I ask you that is because too, <laughs> we're always dealing with this. Like all of a sudden they're back at home and you don't know it. Yeah. It is. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm just picturing that. They're like, I'm not calling. I'm not calling anybody. I'm just going, we're just going home. Well, we do the same thing. We, on a previous podcast, we talked about the drive-by repair where we go and do warranty work as quick as we can and then leave so that nobody knows we were there. Yeah. So our guys have a similar method when they get off work. Like if it's time to get off, they, uh, you know, they leave, they get home. They don't want to let us know that they're, they're winding up the day. Cause they're, I think they're yeah. always, nobody wants to be, be told like at the end of the day, Oh, we're going to do something else for two hours. And by the way, we dropped the generator. In the yeah. Water. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, that too, yeah. That too. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's the exact thing here. Absolutely. Um, funny. I'll call them at quarter to four and, They'll already, they won't answer the phone. They'll already be like driving already home. Instead of just like packing up the room, so. That's funny. Yeah, we get, we get calls that are like, you know, actually we don't get calls. We'll find out, you know, guys will say something like, oh, by the way, wrecked the van two weeks ago. Put a big, <laughs> put a dent in the side. <laughs> Whereas you're getting, you're going to be like, yours are going to be like, oh, by the way, we dropped a generator in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting it fixed though. We're, get, we, we, we're going to get it. Oh, it's glad. Yeah, like. Tools, tools go missing all the time. Luckily, we've only had one fall into the ocean. So. Actually, no. I've had two measuring tapes fall in the ocean. Too. And, and once they get hit with the salt water, they're done. Measuring tapes cannot survive salt water. <laughs> what about the generator? Did you get that going? Um, my insurance company might see this video, so I I um, won't comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Didn't work at all. Never worked again. <laughs> Yeah, never, never saw it again. Left it on the dock, rusted. <laughs> you know, we have a um, since you since you deal in boats, we actually have a, a floor grinder that was described to us by Turk. He's like the everybody knows Turk. Um, <laughs> you met Turk. Yeah, you met Turk. You met Turk with us in at Vegas the, at the retro plate thing. The old the older guy at the retro uh -huh. plate booth. He called one. Of yeah, our, yeah. He said one oh. of our machines that we have is useful for nothing more than a boat anchor. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we should give that to Nick. That's hilarious. You can make use of it. So what's it like hiring people down there? I know that, um, how do you find employees that are willing to do this kind of thing? We've been lucky. Like it's taken five years. We have six guys working and you know, a lot of them were referrals just from previous workers that worked for the company. So, um, right now we're actually looking for an operations manager for the for the company because I, I'm at a point where I'm the bottleneck and we can't scale the business any further because if we're on five or six different jobs, you know, I can't be in all those different places at once if we're installing certain services. You know, I've found somebody from the Philippines. He's worked for Bowmanite for over 20 years. Um, he has serious experience in polished decorative concrete and stamped concrete and so, you know, we're working on filing for a work permit for him and getting him down here so we can grow the business because we turn down work, you know, left, right, and center. It's pretty sad, actually, that we, how much of the work we can't get to because we're too busy. Again, we're, the, we're really the only company down here that does this kind of stuff. So, you know, anybody I hire isn't coming with any level of experience. Mm. Um, so they're starting at zero and we have to train them. We almost find that that's better. Honestly, I think, yeah, I think it's better too. because every business, every guy has his own way of doing things. And when they've been working 10 to 15 years in some other way of doing it, it causes problems it tends to for us. I think some guys just want to see us get in there and get dirty every once in a while. So we can prove, so we can prove to them periodically that we know what we're doing. So that's, I think that's yeah. important for us. I have no, pro I have no problem doing that, but, um, I like to stay clean. Yeah. <laughs> I would say something. He, <laughs> but you're, in, you're 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 in all your videos, all the videos of you guys. You're always in there. Oh, Listen, it's strange. He has a weird talent. I don't understand how he stays so clean. <laughs> I mean, it is it is truly a talent. Yeah. That 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 he's that could be a teaching talented. series. Yeah. He's, <laughs> he's, he's he's conscious of it. <laughs> I do. I like to stay clean. He, he, I like nice he, things. You, you have to be conscious. You hung out with us in Vegas for a whole, you know, two or three days. You, I, we just like nice things. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. That was a lot of fun. I'm glad we got there before the apocalypse. Yeah, it was nice. You Well, for people that didn't go, when we were there, you remember the Chinese booths that were set up there, the diamond booths yeah. were just empty. Yeah, that was really weird. I took so many pictures of empty of the empty booths because it was... But we never thought this would we, happen. Yeah. Did it cross your mind, really, that 
It crossed my mind. I thought because half of the booths were empty, but the other half had the people there from China. I, I immediately thought like, how are we not going to get this? That was, that right. was on my mind. Yeah. Like it. Yeah. It, it's weird. We, we, I went to a vendor, I went to a vendor party with some Chinese suppliers and, um, they told me at the dinner that their flights were canceled going back home. And they oh, were wow. like, we have to stay in Las Vegas. We have to stay in Las Vegas. So like, it was like, they were already shutting down the borders from then. And they had no idea how long they were going to be in Vegas for, um, wow. because, the, Ch- the Chinese weren't allowing to fly back into the country. I um, I just got a notification on my ear, but the, the battery is getting low, so I don't know how much. They yeah. gone. <laughs> That'd be a funny way to end the show. <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> Hold on. Hey. Was that me? I had uh, one other story about complications, if you guys want to hear it. Yeah. There's this, like, really high-end resort, like, multi-multi-million dollar homes um, at the end of Virgin Gordon and Oil Nut Bay. And, um, like, most of these houses are anywhere from 5 to $30 million. Like, just insane. And they're, they're vacation homes. Like, people don't live there year-round. They just... They're multi multi millionaires or billionaires that own these houses as vacation homes. So we got contacted by a contractor to um, do a color polishable overlay in one of these houses. And man, like I have never worked for a contractor, like been subcontracted by a contractor, and they just totally <laughs> like. They're supposed to facilitate the subs, right? And like help out, especially when it's off island and commuting and these sorts of things. So they're responsible for a lot of the transportation. And literally every day for like five weeks, we'd be sitting on the dock for an hour and a half waiting for them or sitting for the boat or waiting for the truck to arrive. Like the boat would be on time and then the truck would be an hour late or the boat would be late and the truck would be on time. It was just, it was nonstop for like five weeks. And there's so many overruns. And then it was just, it was a disaster. So like, I, um, I really push really hard to deal directly with the, the end client now, especially on those high end properties. Obviously I'm going to lose some sales because some of those high net worth people just don't want to be involved in the day to day. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, they just want to pay a contractor to deal with it. Um, but yeah, I've ran into two instances where if I was dealing with the end client, from the beginning that could have all been avoided. So we say that, that all that the time. Yeah. We say that all the time, man. A big, a big learning experience for sure. It was a costly one. Hang tight for one minute. I got to fix that camera. So what do you guys think is going to happen where you guys are with the, the coronavirus? Is it going to get worse or is it going to, we don't know. Stay pretty constant. Or? We don't know. And, 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 I'm I'm to the to the very concerned stage, which is weird because we have a lot of work lined up. But I don't know where the if we're going to get a, a a huge gap of time where we're not going to have any work because same thing down here. Like tourism is going to take a huge hit. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to have to reevaluate their you know business strategies, and obviously there's going to be a lot of opportunities that come from it. But yeah, there's definitely going to be a different mindset that's going to have to take place for a lot of people because it's, it's going to heavily affect <laughs> tourism and stuff throughout the Caribbean. Well, t- you made a good point. Tim and I talk about this a lot too. It's like, if you can come out of the crisis still strong, man, you're going to be doing really good. Really good. It's going to take up so yep. much, so much of our competition will be gone. I think. So if we can just if we can all just survive, whoever can survive, mm-hmm. we should have a good couple of years, I think. Yeah, that's interesting. I never really thought about my competition. What's going well, it, to happen? It'll just solidify you even more than you are. We're about to lose our camera. We already lost one camera. This one's about to go dead too. We should kind of wrap it up. Yeah, we better get going, Nathan. Okay. Any, any last thoughts, Nathan? Yeah. Yeah, but uh, last thoughts. I'd like uh, you, you're posting this on YouTube, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'd, I'd like to ask a question for the people that are watching. Um, if there's anybody in sorry in the decorative concrete industry or polished concrete industry that is interested um, because of new opportunities that have arisen to you know come down here and work. Um, you know, I'm not saying that the opportunity is for sure there, but it might be there. So, you know, reach out to me and let me know if you're, if you, um, want to relocate and work in the Caribbean, um, just comment. Hello. I think I might do that. I know, I'll text you later. I'll text you later. You can send me the link to the application. <laughs> Excellent. Um, yeah, I was just saying we're on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and LinkedIn, all at Concrete BBI. The name of the business is Alternative Concrete Solutions, but that's a mouthful. So all our social stuff is at Concrete BBI. Cool. We'll put all that in the description below and in the in the show notes yeah. on the podcast version. Good seeing you again, man. It was good to hang yeah, out man. here and stay safe, buddy. Yeah, same to you guys. I, I really appreciated the opportunity. It's my first podcast um, being on one. So, yeah, hopefully we can do some more. I like your shirt, by the way. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right, Cheers. See you, see ya. There's one thing we didn't talk about. I'm still recording, so I can, I might put this in earlier or in the outro or something. But um, how about that driveway you did? Like, you always, like, you did that driveway. It was, it was a 10,000 feet. Is that about right? Uh, it was 6,500 feet. It was our first uh, recycled rubber coating. But you built a tent over the entire driveway. Or did you just move the tent? Yeah, yeah so it, it was my first job. We It didn't really work as intended, um, and we got really lucky. Did we got very say, fortunate with the did weather. You, did you say intended? <laughs> What's that? Intended? You said intended. I thought you said intended. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so yeah, we used half inch. We used half inch PVC pipe to basically build a frame um, over the entire driveway, and the driveway is 430 feet long. And then the intention, intention, intention. Yeah. <laughs> the intention was to drape, you know, just cheap construction plastic over top of it in case it rained. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was a lot of work and a lot of money. I actually ended up selling the PVC uh, nice. after like reselling it. That's funny. So. I saw a picture of you had like tinted yeah. the, you had, like tinted the whole driveway. It looked like the whole driveway. <laughs> it's crazy. But yeah, that, that that was the plan. But um th they were just too flimsy. After we put the plastic over it, they just like drooped and fell and Yeah, that's intense. Looks good. <laughs> looks good for the video. Oh, goodness. All right, dude. Thanks for talking to us. Yeah. Cheers. Oh. Look forward to seeing it. <laughs>